What was the first meeting of Captain America and Black Panther? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you, all of the directions of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by respective companies. This story takes place during World War II. It's the classic Steve Rogers Captain America, but the Black Panther in this story is the grandfather of the one that you know. Black Panther has always been the king of the Wakandan nation, so whoever is the king at the time is the Black Panther of the story. And our story begins with the first African-American placed on Nick Fury's Howling Commandos, Gabe Jones. Nick Fury didn't care that the army wasn't fully integrated yet, he just wanted people that could kill the Nazis. But as good as the Howling Commandos were at killing Nazis, there was someone better. Someone in red, white, and blue, and his name was literally Captain America. The Howling Commandos and Captain America were unstoppable, and the Nazi High Command saw that. Hitler wanted answers because they had a missile program that needed completion, and that latest defeat pushed them back at least six months. Strucker suggested that they reach out to the local resources of Africa to get some vibranium, and there was only one small nation guarding it, the Wakandan nation. The higher-ups decided that Captain America and the Howling Commandos worked really well together, so they sent them into Africa to look for a possible partnership with the nation of Wakanda. As they drew closer, Captain America jumped out of the plane early and landed in front of multiple heads on pikes. It would appear that the Nazis beat the US to that location, and then were quickly defeated by the Wakandan nation. One of the Nazis did get away and he ran back to Strucker to tell him how horrible it was that the Nazi forces couldn't even defeat the nation. So Strucker had the man killed. But back with Captain America, he pressed forward until he was confronted by a man dressed in all black with a cape. The Black Panther tells him that he can go home now. They have handled the garbage. And Cap tells him, I actually wanted to ask them a few questions. Black Panther responds in turn, We have the answers that we need. Then I guess that means that I have questions for you. The army pulls out their spears on Captain America and they inform him that the Black Panther is the king here. Captain America makes no demands. In the distance, the Howling Commandos are watching on. But Cap walks up on Black Panther, telling him that these times are dangerous. Black Panther needs to pick a side. We have our own side. You can't be serious. Then the Black Panther kicks Cap in the chest. They go back and forth with the Black Panther dodging Cap's moves, but Cap overpowers them when they actually grapple. Off in the distance, the Howling Commandos get ready to move in until they find that they are surrounded. Back at the Nazi High Command, Strucker turns to the man that they sent in to help him for answers, the Red Skull. And the Red Skull replies with, Captain America will die. The whole situation between Captain America and Black Panther is easily explained away, and Cap didn't force anything on the Wakandan King. So, Captain America and the Howling Commandos became welcomed guests of the nation. The Howling Commandos were in shock. Black Panther wanted Cap dead, and now they're friends? While Black Panther isn't looking to join the Allies, he is willing to consider a partnership after Captain America and Nick Fury convince him that it would be in his best interest. But, it would only be in Wakanda's terms. Once the Howling Commandos are shown their room, Nick Fury gets a little worried about Captain America. His concern is that the Cap is green and might be falling for Wakanda's tricks. So he asks Gabe to get close to the members of the Wakandan nation so that he can find out what's really going on. Gabe asks why he thinks that Gabe will be able to trick them, and Fury tells him, because he's a howler. Gabe relaxes, thinking to himself how he finally found a black man's paradise. And now they're asking him to spy on it to find out if the Black Panther is a Nazi puppet. The next day, Red Skull's first plan begins as tanks approach the walls of Wakanda prepared to fight. The Howling Commandos all get up ready to help out, but that's when they discover that they are locked in their sleep quarters because the Black Panther feels like he doesn't need their help. First, a device goes off on the battlefield, messing up with the magnetics in the area. Then various tanks start randomly exploding as the Red Skull and Strucker watch on. After a good amount of damage has already been caused, the Black Panther jumps into the battle with the help of Captain America. They run spears through the Nazis, and then they beat them in with Cap's shield. The Nazis begin to panic, dropping grenades at their feet, and more explosions go off. Once they begin trying to shoot them, Cap blocks the shots with his shield, and he ricochets them back at the Nazis, killing many of them. So the Nazis decide that he can't block all of the bullets, and Cap shouts, FOR FREEDOM! before jumping in with Black Panther and his followers to finish off the rest of the Nazis. They cut them limb from limb and kill every Nazi on the battlefield. Finally, the people of Wakanda let the Howling Commandos out and they rush out to find everyone dead. Nick Fury asks what they want their help with and they tell him to move the bodies. Back at the Nazi camp, Strucker asked what that was. They didn't even stand a chance and Red Skull informs him they weren't supposed to. It was an exploratory stab to see what we're up against because I want to send in my bigger troops. Mastermind, Warrior Woman, the Armless Tiger Man, and our secret weapon, one of Wakandan's biggest enemies, the White Gorilla. 
The secret weapon of the Nazis begins with the white gorilla walking right into the camp. They recognize him right away and they ask him what he was promised, the kingdom. He grabs their heads and he starts crushing them with his bare hands. And then he shoves his fists through the rest of the members that were guarding the door. While this is happening, Nick Fury requests a private audience with Captain America. Captain America turns down the request that Nick Fury was asking of him. While this is also going on, Gabe is sneaking into the camp to gain enough trust to go into the Vibranium Mines. But before he can do anything, Warrior Woman rides a bomb into the camp stating that the big ones never last as long as they should. The battle begins again, but this time with super-powered individuals. Warrior Woman goes to hit a woman, but just as she winds up, Captain America stands there taking the hit into his shield. He tells her that he hates hitting women, but he then smacks her with his shield. She responds by hitting Cap so hard that he flies into the sky. He starts to wonder how he's going to survive this one, but that's when Black Panther picks him up in a jet. Black Panther then tells Cap that the Nazis learned a lot from their last attack, and they ripped out the protection totem. But that just allows Black Panther to show the technological superiority of Wakanda, and they begin to open fire with new weapons. Captain America jumps out of the plane, landing on the white gorilla to stop him, and Gabe finds himself at the mercy of Master Man, while armless Tiger Man is off eating various members of the nation. As Master Man is about to kill Gabe, Black Panther crashes his plane into Master Man. While this is happening, Warrior Woman finds herself under attack from the women of Wakanda, with electric whips. She gets up and starts grabbing their heads to defeat them, but then across the battlefield, the Howling Commandos are looking for any other people to fight, and that's when the Red Skull shows up in a giant Nazi robot suit. Back with Cap, White Gorilla is pounding on a shield over and over, so he jumps up sucker punching White Gorilla, and then using his shield, he throws the man down. The Howling Commandos were assaulting the Nazi base camp in secret, and that's when they found the giant robot Red Skull. All of their bullets bounce off of them, and then he pins them down with his gun, ready to fire. While inside of the palace, Gabe sneaks in to avoid fighting, and that's when he finds some vibranium. So he pockets it, and he climbs up a ladder where he finds the armless Tiger Man holding the Prince of Wakanda hostage, T'Chaka. He pulls out his gun, and he shoots the armless Tiger Man through the head with a single shot. The Queen is thankful, and Cap comes running over. He tells Gabe the problem. The commandos are in the Nazi base with Red Skull, and Cap needs to get ready to head over into that fight. While this is happening, Black Panther is beating down on Master Man, and Master Man is no match for the Black Panther. As Black Panther drops him, he calls out for an extra large body bag, and that's when Warrior Woman hits Black Panther from behind. While you'd think that she would get Black Panther with that advantage, he drops her even easier than Master Man. Meanwhile, the Howling Commandos are still fighting with the giant robot body of Red Skull, and Nick Fury runs into the main base to confront Strucker himself. But the confrontation is interrupted as the Red Skull rips the top of the building off. Meanwhile, Black Panther, Captain America, and Gabe have all loaded up onto a plane to move over to that base in a hurry. While Nick Fury and the Commandos are losing their fight, everyone looks up to see Captain America and Black Panther jumping in out of the plane to join in. They land on top of the giant robot, and Cap breaks the glass dome, protecting Red Skull before being thrown aside. Black Panther then throws a drum at Red Skull, hoping to stop him, but it doesn't work, so he hands Captain America his circular shield and tells him to use it. Cap throws it, shattering the center of the robot, ruining Red Skull's plans. Strucker then pulls his gun on Nick Fury, refusing to surrender, but it's Black Panther that tells him, You are the last Nazi standing, and if I ever see any Nazis coming for Wakanda again, I will ensure you, you will be killed. As Strucker leaves, Black Panther offers the circular shield to Cap for his part in helping. While Cap turns it down, he tells Black Panther that it has given him some ideas for his next shield. Everyone suits up to leave, and Black Panther accepts Gabe's answer to his question. When he found out that Gabe had saved his son, he offered Gabe Wakandan citizenship. But Gabe will always be a howler, and he turned it down. Though when he got back on the plane, Fury asked him if he found any vibranium, and after thinking about it, he told Fury that he hadn't, keeping the fact that he actually had found some secret. When they all get back to the base, it was decided that Captain America doesn't look out for the interests of the country, and therefore, they need to get him a sidekick, one that will listen to the Black Ops orders of the government. And Captain America went off to make a circular shield, one that he still uses today. I thought this was a fun little story about Captain America and Black Panther, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you give this video a like, follow me on Twitter at ComicStorian, and follow me on Instagram at ComicStorian, and don't forget about our gaming channel, Eligible Monster, and our manga channel, Manga Storian. I'll see you guys next time right here.